Hey guys, welcome back to another interesting topic. Today's topic is about handshake based synchronizer. So before going into the topic, if you are new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on. And if you have any doubts, comment down below. I will respond within 24 hours. So why do we need a handshake synchronizer? We have two flop synchronizer to send the data, but, but there's a problem with the two flop synchronizer. With two flop synchronizer, we are able to send a single bit at a time. Understand this point, with two flop synchronizer, we are able to send a single bit at a time. So if you want to send an n bit data, how many two flop synchronizer we require? We require n two flop synchronizers, okay? So that's the reason we are going with the handshake synchronizer. So as you can see over here, we have handshake synchronizer, a basic diagram, how it looks. So we have two state machines, sender state machine and a receiver state machine which is running on a clock A domain and which is running on a clock B domain. So we need to synchronize them. So in this synchronization scheme, we are gonna use request and acknowledgement mechanism. Okay, we can see that request is over here, acknowledgement is over here, so that these two signals guarantee that our sampling of the data is correct from this clock to this clock. I hope you are understanding it. So from the sender state machine, we are sending data and request and after the data is been received correctly, we will get an acknowledgement to the sender from the receiver. So one more important point is that data should not change frequently and data should be stable until we, requ until we receive an act signal from the receiver. So the sender must not change the data until an acknowledgement is received from the receiver. So now let us look at the timing diagrams for the better understanding. So we have a two flop synchronizer over here. We have a two flop synchronizer over here and let's go into the timing diagram. So as you can see over here, we have clock A and we are sending the data along with the request signal. And as you can see, data is stable uh, until we get an act signal. So this request will be sent to a two flop synchronizer. So as you can see, the request is passed to a two flop synchronizer, which is having a clock domain of the receiver and that is B clock B. Now let us look at the outputs of B1Q and B2Q. So the request is being passed to a clock B domain in a two flop synchronizer. So it will be arrived at this edge and we are getting B1Q as high and B2Q high for the next flop because we are having a one flop between B1Q and B2Q. So we are getting B1Q and B2Q to the receiver end. So when we receive B2Q to the receiver end, we will generate an act signal. When the receiver gets the request, it will take in the data and generate an act signal so that this act signal will be sent to a sender FSM. So when we received B2Q, we have generated an act signal and we have received the data so this is the Rx data that the receiver has received from this data has been received. As you can see, this data has been received by the receiver. So when act signal is sent back, we are using a two flop synchronizer again. As you can see, we are using a two flop synchronizer again. So A1Q and A2Q, let's see what are the output. So one important point is that here we are changing the act signal in its setup time. So that will be a small metastability and I'm hoping that it will be stable after a certain amount of time and going to one. So as a result, we will get A to Q high. When A to Q is being seen by the sender FSM, it will change the data. So here we can change the data when we have received an acknowledgement signal. So let, us, let me summarize the whole handshake synchronizer in one minute. So as you can see, we have two clock domains, a clock B and clock A domain. So sender sends the data along with the request signal. So request will be synchronized. And whenever the request is being received by the receiver SF FSM, it will take in the data. When this is received, it will take in the data and it will send the ag data and it will change the data whenever ag is acknowledged by the receiver. So then only it can change the data, otherwise it cannot change the data. The data must be stable in the synchronization scheme. Understand this. Data must be stable until we get an acknowledgement signal from the receiver to FSM. I hope you have understood this topic. This is a small topic of a handshake synchronizer and I have discussed about the various synchronizer that is a clock domain crossing in my synchronization section and if you want to check it out, go to my channel and you can see the playlist. Click on the playlist and check out the synchronizers. 
So thanks for watching. I hope you understood the handshake synchronizer. And if you have any doubts, comment down below. I will respond within 24 hours. Thanks for watching. Hope you understood it. And please make sure you hit that like button and make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.